Bili nochime, welcome to the Nahuatl channel. Today we're gonna take a look at some of the most misleading Nahuatl memes, posts, uh, Instagrams, and Facebook viral um, announcements that will mislead a lot of students into believing basically nonsense or just have general errors that we need to take a look at. Like I've mentioned before, this is a very common thing in the Nahuatl world and it requires a lot of students who don't have the time and energy to fact-checked everything, and native speakers who also don't have the time and energy to put in the labor to constantly tell people uh, which posts are true and which posts are fake. So to make your job a little bit easier, today we will look at some of these posts. Now really quick, uh, the purpose again is not to shame any of the people who spread these posts. It's a lot of times not anyone's fault. Um, these posts go on and people assume that they're being made by someone who's credible and they just continue to spread and share these types of posts. And by the time it's been corrected, it will already have spread. And sometimes the people who create these posts are well-intentioned, but simply don't have the knowledge necessary to be able to um, create accurate information. And so they're being part of spreading the fake information out there. So again, no shame, no judgment here, but we do want to correct some of these misleading uh, posts out there. The first one we'll be looking at is this one here. It's in Spanish, but I'll translate it. It's basically talking about the Tlacuache, which is the opossum in, in Spanish. Now, the Tlacuache says that it comes from Nahuatl, which it does. It says that it comes from the word Tlacuatzin. Uh, more commonly, you'll hear Tlacuachin, but close enough. Their error is that they say that it means small thing that eats fire. Okay, so tlacuachin, the word for fire is either tletl or tlitl or tetl or titl, depending on the variety. But the word tlacuachin doesn't have anything to do with fire in its meaning. Now, I know that in the mythology, in the stories, in the history, that tlacuachin is um, the animal that brought fire to people. Um, and his tail got burnt off in the process. And so that is a true um, story that certain Nawa towns have. But it, the word Tlacuatin itself has nothing to do with fire in its name. This next one came about pretty recently. This one says that Chihuahua comes from Nahuatl. Now, in reality, no one really knows what where the word Chihuahua comes from, whether it's from Nahuatl or one of the relatives of Nahuatl, so that, such as Tarahumara or Raramuri as it's known, which is spoken in Chihuahua, as Nahuatl is not really a language of Chihuahua. The error here, though, is, is trying to claim that the word Chihuahua comes from Nahuatl and that it means the place where the dogs bark. Okay, so someone might have seen that some people call a dog Chichi, and that's true. And the word to say to bark is Tlaahua. Now, someone who doesn't speak Nahuatl will see Tlaahua and think it looks a lot like Chihuahua, but not knowing any of the rules of Nahuatl, that will be the wrong conclusion to come about here. Dog that barks would be Chichi Tlen Tlaahua, which is a long word already. Okay, and then that's not to mention that this doesn't have the place name ending like Kan or Tlan. And lastly, the third point here is that this isn't the way that Nawas name towns anyway. Nawas don't say the place where the dog barks, you know, or the place where the bird uh, screeches. Things like that are not common Nawat type names of places. In another video, maybe we'll explore more about the pattern of how Nawas do create the names of the towns and cities. Okay, this next one deals with the word Chichimecatl. Okay, so there's been a lot of people trying to create different theories about what Chichimecatl means. And some people don't really like to accept the fact that maybe the Mexica or the Aztecs uh, kind of look down upon the Chichimecas. And, you know, the, the, the Mexica lived in bigger urban cities, whereas the Chichimecas lived in more rural kind of areas. It's pretty likely, like in all city civilizations, that they would look down upon the country people. Okay, so, um, you know, but that's the, the problem here is not uh, the judgment. So that's not the topic again of today. But now because of these beliefs, people try and look for another meaning of Chichimecat. A lot of people have spread this idea that Chichimecat means the line or lineage of dogs. Because Chichi means dog and Mecat does mean rope. Okay, but this is not a common title of, of how to give ethnic names. 
Okay, so if you look at the way that Nawas give ethnic names to people, um, you have the name of a town or center or or their government that you could say, and they'll say the resident of that town. Okay, so Zapoteco would mean the resident of Zapotlan, right? Mixteco would be the resident of Mixtlan. So what's going on here with Chichimecatl? Well, Mecatl is the ending for places that end in man. So this is probably mean people from Chichiman. So Chichiman gives word to a resident of Chichiman, which is a Chichimecatl. Okay, so that word doesn't necessarily mean anything negative on its own. It just means people from Chichiman. Okay, the negativity, whether it's there or not, would come later with the association of people like that. But it's not in the name itself. Apapacho is a very common uh, word out there, thrown out there, that's saying that it comes from Nahuatl. Okay, so I'm not sure if it does or doesn't come from Nahuatl, but what I do know for sure is that it does not mean the meaning that a lot of um, hippies like to give it, which is to embrace or caress something with the soul. Okay, so uh, papachoa in some writings does mean a type of massage that you give with your hands. Okay, so that it does mean a type of massage. So I could see why some people would translate that as caress, even though it's a little bit different. But from there, then they give it the meaning of embrace, which is more of a hug. And there's another word which means hug, which is nahnawa or nahnawa depending on the variety. And nothing in the word has anything to do with the soul. So this is just people giving it way too much meaning than it that it doesn't really have. And this type of meme has already spread so that it's become a truth to a lot of people. Okay, but you know, um, the word in itself has nothing to do with the word for soul. Okay, so it, it's not in it, it's not related to it at all. Um, and that's just not the definition of, of this word. Okay, this is another one from a group that's trying to sell a product, which is perfectly fine. Um, but to do it, they've continued to spread this message of that it means to caress with the soul, which it does not. Okay, Tejuino. Now, uh, no one's been public or, or no linguist has, uh, you know, come out with a term that I know of, of where is the origin of Tejuino. It's possible it's from Tejuino where you have a bar half borrowing from Na from Spanish and partly from Nahuatl. You have Texat, which becomes Tejate, uh, Agua de Tejate, which is common in Oaxaca. So that's why I think it wouldn't be too far out of the place to think it might be a mix of Tex, which means uh, ashes or something similar, and, and Wina. Um, or there's other words that are possible. It's possible it's not from Nahuatl at all. Some varieties, some places in Mexico call us Tez Wina. Okay? Um, so there's many op possibilities there. For it's very likely though it does not come from tequin. Okay, so the verb actually is tequini, which does mean that a heartbeat or any type of beat similar to that. But if it was from tequini, first of all that's an action. Okay, so people don't borrow actions usually like that without changing it a little bit. It would be tequinte maybe. Okay, like coming from the word tequintli, which would be the noun form of that word. But tequin would not be logically or commonly turned into tequin, no. Okay, that K doesn't usually turn into an H in many words. It's not a common pattern. Okay, so um, probably not from tequini. And plus, drinks are not usually named after metaphorical things. So see, people often want everything in now to be metaphorical and push too much to, to force a metaphorical translation even when there isn't one. Sometimes water is just water. It doesn't have to be something metaphorical. Okay, another type of error you'll see is that it comes from the fact that in Spanish, people, this, and it's not anyone's fault, but people in, in Spanish, you don't have a difference between the ch sound and the sh sound. Okay, so cho and sho are sound kind of like the same or are pretty much the same sound for a lot of Spanish speaking people. So there's going to be a lot of confusions because Nahuatl does have two different meanings for those two sounds, between the ch sound and the sh sound. So sometimes people think everything with ch should be spelled with an x, because that makes it more Nahuatl. But that's not the case. That's just an error because of Spanish. So chili, this, in this page, they try to say that chili comes from the Nahuatl word chili, which it does not. It comes from the Nahuatl word chili. So in this case, it just was the, ch the ch word. They wrote it with an X trying to make it more Nahuatl and that would not be right. Shili would be a different word. Shili is a type of 
It's a type of water creature that's kind of like a shrimp. In this post, they're trying to say that the name of this flower comes from Atl plus Cocotli and Xochitl. Now, this is interesting. They actually got the meaning of the word probably correct. But the way that they put it together is that they forgot to take out the TL endings, and uh, which should have been there in the word originally, so I don't know why they re-added it back in there and made a word that you cannot even pronounce in Nahuatl. And they said, try to pronounce this. And that's not at all what this flower is called. It's called So they got the meaning of it correct, but then they made up some pronunciation of it by putting it all together without knowing anything of how Nahuatl grammar works. Certain groups of people refuse to believe that the Mexica had spirits or deities or gods or whatever you want to call them. And they want to say that they only had scientists instead or that they or whatever that they want to say. This video topic is not about what the Mexica believed in or what the Aztecs believed in. Um, but we're looking at the roots of the words. So Tlaloc, um, the origin of this word is a true mystery. Okay, but we know certain things that it does not mean and are obvious that it does not mean. So in this one, they're trying to say that Tlaloc comes from the word Tlali, which means land, and Octli, which means liquor. The length of the vowels do actually fit. So Tlaloc has a long A, and Tlali also has a long A. So this does come from Tlali, probably, which most likely means um, something dealing with the land or the dirt or the ground or the earth. It means all of those things. The problem is saying that Ok comes from Octli. One of the reasons we know it probably does not come from Octli is that when there, you have many of the Tlaloc, it's called Tlaloque. Tlaloque. Okay, so that's the plural form of Tlaloc. This Ke ending is the plural form of the C of the past tense. Tlaloc. Okay, so Tlaloc. The root of Octli is Ok, not, K, not the K sound, not K. So there is no way this could take the plural form of ke. So therefore we know for sure it does not match tlaloctli. One possible word is that it has something to do with tlalo, which means something covered in land, or something else similar. But it does not mean octli liquor. Okay, this phrase has spread around really famously. Ni uh, means tlasotla no chino yolo, which they say means I love you all my, with all my heart. Okay. So it's, it is technically possible some varieties say this, but most likely most varieties are missing the word with. Because most likely if you don't see the word with, what you're actually saying here is I love you on my heart. As if you're talking to your heart. And if you're talking to your heart, I love you on my heart, then it does make sense. But if you're trying to say I love you with on my heart, you need the word with, which is usually ka or ika in most varieties. But it's missing that with or to be understood in most varieties. Okay, in this meme, they copied the errors of the last meme, but you might notice that they misspelled the word, which is kochi. They wrote kochi instead of nochi, meaning everything or ah. So they said here, I love you sleeps my heart. And they translate it as, I love you with all my heart. So that's a, a typo that they made um, in the spelling of this. And, and uh, you know, we all make typos and that's fine, but the problem with memes is that before you can fix a typo, it's already going to have spread out and been shared a hundred times. Okay, it's a common misconception that everything in out again has the sh sound. Everyone wants to believe that everything in out has a sh sound. So the word chocolate or chocolate, um, uh, they think it must come from chocolate. Okay, but actually, chococ uh, doesn't mean, chococ actually means sour, it does not mean bitter. Okay, and those are two different things. So people in English kind of got that confused between the difference between sour and bitter and trying to say this means bitter water. But actually it would mean sour water. And even then it doesn't really make sense. Chocok would be the right word, not chocol in chocoli. So it would not have an L either way here. Um, it would be chocok at, and that would mean sour water. And so the spelling doesn't match, uh, the, pronunci the pronunciation doesn't match, and the meaning doesn't match. So where does it actually come from? Well, in now this is actually pronounced two ways. It's either chocolate or chicolatl. Okay, so not everything in now has a sh sound. Okay, this is a poem that um, someone passed on to me. 
asking me if it was uh, a legitimate source or not. This is sort of like a self-help poem uh, to kind of help you get through tough times. Um, there's nothing totally wrong with that. And, you know, if these types of poems help you, then by all means, go for it and use them and, um, and, and repeat them to yourself to, to help you get through difficult times. The problem is that someone added the ending that it's a shamanic blessing translated from Nahuatl. For one, they don't say which Nahuatl variety. Two, they don't say which shaman or who or where did they get it from. Three, they don't have the Nahuatl translation even imitated. They just made this up or took it from somewhere and then just stuck on the Nahuatl ending thing it's from Nahuatl. And uh, the problem with this too, if, you, if, if once you've seen a little bit of Nahuatl, you will see that this isn't the way that Nahuatl is expressed. These aren't the types of phrases that Nahuas typically will say. And shamanic blessings don't say and are not focused so much on you personally and your emotions as much as they are focused on healing um, ailments, healing um, curses and and you know and evil wind spirits, or asking from nature to get rain, or asking from nature to uh, get things that you want from nature. Okay, so those are the type of true shamanic chants or incantations or whatever you want to translate into English. Aguacate. So this one's wrong on very many levels. Okay, so first of all, aguacate comes from the Nahuatl word aguacatl, which means avocado. It just means that. It means the fruit. Okay, so that's, that's what it means. Now, the way that now it works is that anything that looks like testicles, you can call it testicles. So instead of saying the word for testicles, you just say anything that looks like it. Or maybe some varieties say no awaka, which means my, my avocados. Okay, but it, it's not the other way around. It's not that people saw the fruit and called it testicles, but rather people saw testicles and called it fruit. So it's kind of like a politer way of referring to your uh, male testes if you have any. Okay, so this is not, so it's not the other way around. So that's the first error here. They say that awakat comes from testicle and also from awat, which means tree. Okay, so awat is a type of tree called awate, but just because you see awa in awakat doesn't mean that it comes from that. So again, people see sounds and repeating sounds over and over again and think that it must mean that. So awakat, if they if they if awakat comes from awat, then you take out the awa and you're left with kat, and kat does not mean testicle. So this theory obviously doesn't fit. Laso kamati. In this one, you're gonna see the error of seeing words that you recognize or sounds that you recognize and think it means the wrong thing. Instead of learning the grammar which shows you how to put words together people just look for sequences of sounds and try and break apart their meanings ridiculous if you did it in english um but for some reason people get away with it in nahuatl so people are kind of taking advantage of a, a language that they don't haven't mastered yet to make up meanings so that they can make memes and posts okay so tlaso kamati so people think that it has kamatl which means mouth. It has those sounds, for sure it has the sound kama, and then that it also has mati, which means to feel something. And so putting the, and then tlaso, tlasotla, which means love. And so putting all those together, they say, it, it means through my mouth, I give you the feeling of love. And that that's how you say thank you. And it's just ridiculous. It's, it's totally bogus. If we do really have this meaning, you, the word would be tlasotla, and then kama, and then mati. And they don't explain here why you somehow delete the ma in one of those. Just because it's convenient, tlasotla, kama, mati would be something like what you're actually saying. The other thing is you can't just stick nouns and verbs together like this and then expect them to make sense. So, uh, again, people don't understand the way that Nahuatl actually works, the way you put words together and just stick things onto them. Okay, so most likely we have here tlasotli, which means something loved or beloved, and then ka, which is a glue. Type of a glue word here that helps you join things together. And then mati, which is to know or recognize or feel. Okay, so it's like I recognize your love, I recognize you in a loving way. Anything like that would make much more sense. But it has nothing to do with mouth here.
Okay, this one says that the word for breasts in Spanish, which is chiche, comes from Nahuatl. Now, it probably does. In fact, the uh, Spanish dictionaries even state this themselves. So, chichiwali does mean breasts. Chiche does come from chichiwali. The problem here is that they're saying that chichiwali is the name of the paradise where dead children go to drink from a tree. And in fact, the way it's written, it also it makes you think the first time you read it that chichiwali is the name of the paradise, which is not. Uh, Chichiwali is not a paradise. Chichiwali just means breasts. Okay, last one. When you're looking up names in Nahuatl, you want to be extra careful and make sure you get them from someone who, who can speak the language, at least someone who can speak the language fluently, or someone who you trust knows how to break down Nahuatl words. Okay, if someone just gives you a, a Nahuatl name and you don't know if they actually speak Nahuatl or not, just be very careful. Okay, the errors here are actually all on the woman's side. Okay, so Itzel, they misspelled Itzel, which is missing a T in that pronunciation because tz is not a common thing in Spanish. So they, they spelled it Itzel instead of Itzel. Um, and they said that means um, the only one. Uh, Nocelti is something that means by myself. Iselti does mean by herself. Okay, but this actual word comes from the Mayan language. The way that people are actually using it actually comes from the Mayan language. Okay, so not anything to do with Nahuatl. Chitlali is actually Sitlalin. Okay, so this is actually an S sound like this. S. But again, people who speak Spanish have a diff difficult time differentiating between the CH sound and the SH sound and think that everything in Nahuatl probably has the SH sound. So just stick it on there. Okay, but they're different sounds, so you can't mix them up. Okay, so Shitlali is actually Sitlali with an S or C, however you want to spell it, but something that represents the S sound. The SH does not represent the S sound. Okay, if you're speaking Spanish, the word Xochitl, you can pronounce it Sochi, and that's fine in Mexican Spanish because that's the only way you can pronounce it if you're only speaking in Spanish. But if you're speaking in Nahuatl, the way to pronounce it is Xochitl. Now, sometimes people confuse those two and have a difficult time distinguishing between the CH and the SH. Remember, there are two different sounds. There's SH and CHI. If you mispronounce it, you might say CHOCHITL, which is not the right way. Or you might overuse the X and say CHOCHITL, and now you're forgetting to use the CH in the second time. There are different sounds, SH and then CHITL. And the last one here is HATIBE. Now, some varieties of now might ha do have the B sound, but 98% of Nahuatl speakers are not going to say B, okay? And then ha, you don't have that word at the beginning of words. So what's going on here? Hatsibe, the goddess of, of happiness that they say it means here. Hatsibe is not Nahuatl. It's a different language, okay? So if they can't even give you words in the right language, uh, just be extra careful um, how you're picking these names. You know, I, if anyone has babies, I sure hope that you do. Uh, consider it now its name, and we'll have another video on that topic to help you choose uh, the right ones. I hope this video was helpful for some of you all. Laskamati for listening and keeping an open eye and open ears and open heart about this subject. Because the point is for all of us to learn and grow um, and not to shame anyone for the misinformation. Laskamati!